Yes. Okay. Samir, Let's come back so. to why you became a Muslim. What were you? What was your background? What were you raised? Were you were you raised atheist, agnostic, Christian, Buddhist? What were you? Uh, all of the above. Mostly agnostic in the beginning. Okay, in the beginning, you were you an agnostic, or your parents were agnostics as well? I was agnostic. My parents were atheists. My grandparents mm. were Christian. I see. So and so, how long have you been a Muslim? Like a year now. You're okay. So. On your journey, what made you become a Muslim? Uh, well, first, I, I want to make clear, I don't believe that God um, is a person. So he doesn't, he doesn't have a person. So it's an it. So when the Quran describes Allah as speaking and communicating, so Allah is an it? Yeah. Really? Can you give me the verse of the Quran that says Allah is an it? Uh, it doesn't say it. It uses he because... Um, that's just how Arabic is. Uh, how Arabic prove it. Works. Give me the Arabic dictionary lexicon. It says that's how the Arabic is. Don't make assertions. Prove it. Okay, let's see. Give me the Arabic lexicon which says that the reason why Allah is described with masculine pronouns as opposed to feminine pronouns is because he's in it. <clears throat> so if it's in it, why not call him she? Give me the Quran and the Arabic lexicons. Don't make assertions you can't prove. Okay. You don't mind waiting for a response? Well, yeah, well, I'm waiting because uh, you're just feeding me what you think Allah is. You haven't even given me anything from the Quran to back up your assertion. Okay. So as in it, can you call him she and you, can you say, Oh Allah, she is so wonderful and she is so majestic. Okay. Can you do that, by the way, as you're looking up a dictionary that you're going to butcher? So can you say, Allah, she is wonderful, she is majestic. After all, if Allah is neither male nor female, then that means you can apply both pronouns to Allah. You can call him a he and a she, right? So can you say, I want this recorded. Can you say, Allah, she is wonderful, she is majestic? No. Say it again? No. But wait, I thought you said Allah is not a person, it's in it. Why can't you? Because if you can use he for Allah, why can't you use she for Allah? Because Allah is beyond gender. According to you, yep. that's that's what they fed you. Yep. All right. So, okay. So now give me any source that says that Allah is in it. Show it to me. Okay. I'm waiting. So first we need to say that there's no verse in the Quran that uses... Uh, basically, every time Allah is referred to, it has the word Hawa, which means he. Cool, yeah. In Arabic. Oh, okay. so, no, no feminine pronouns or no verbs. Feminine. No Why not? It even, it even specifies this in one of the verses. I know. Surah Al Ikhlas, chapter 1 to. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Allah. no not that. Not that. Surah okay, now, I'm going to repeat my question again. Can you show me any verse in the Quran where feminine pronouns, verbs, and adjectives are used for Allah? There is no feminine. Why not? He's an it. And it can be called with masculine or feminine pronouns and verbs and adjectives. Why only masculine? Because the nature of God is singular. What does singular have to do with masculine pronouns and verbs? You make no sense. Because in the Arabic language... You don't know Arabic. You've just been a Muslim here. Do me a favor. I'm going to give you a chapter of the Quran. I want you to read the Arabic. I'm going to give you the Arabic link. You're going to read because you're now pontificate in Arabic and you've been a Muslim only for a year. I'm not going to give you a link. You're going to read the Arabic, and you're going to parse it and break it down for me. Are you ready? I will not be able to do that. Say it again. I will not be able to do that. So stop talking about the Arabic when you have no clue what the Arabic is. Stop telling me what the Arabic is. So I'm going to make it easy for you. This is the third time. If Allah is in it, that means he's beyond gender. Because he's beyond gender, you can then apply masculine and feminine pronouns, verbs, participles, adjectives a lot because he's neither male nor female. He's beyond gender, so you can use all genders to describe him. So why only masculine <clears throat> pronouns, verbs, participles, adjectives? The Quran only refers to him in the masculine. Why? Because you told me Allah is an it. Why? You still didn't give me the answer. Because singular means it can't be feminine or plural. Where did you get that from? And the, the fact is, there is a plural noun used for Allah, and Allah is speaking of himself in the plural all throughout the Quran. We, us, our, and Allahumma. What are you talking about? 
What are you talking about? Allah throughout the Quran is saying we, us, our. And then there's the word Allahumma used five times of Allah. And that's plural. That's not singular. So what are you talking about, man? So let's come back to the issue. Why did you become Muslim again? Because I believe Islam is the truth. Why? Because the nature of God is true in Islam. We're going to go back to that again? Nothing you've told me uh, about Allah is unique to Islam because it's also true of Jews and Christians. Meaning the Judeo-Christian concept of God. Same thing applies. Just, merciful, loving. In fact, the Judeo-Christian concept does you one better. It says that God can be your spiritual heavenly father, whereas Allah cannot be in the Quran. So now, can we get to the point not spend another five hours? What is the Quran confirming that was there at the time of Muhammad, which the Jews and Christians had? Uh, what, what, what was the Quran confirming? Um, the revelation. What did they have? That they were reading? That they were studying because you remember 244 you recite the scripture what scripture what books did they have at the time of muhammad that muhammad confirms to be the revelations of god the same god that sent down the quran i believe the quran refers to it as the Injil. so they'd be like okay, let's try this again what were the books that the jews and christians historically would have had at that oh, time both, yeah. say it again but yeah the, the torah and the Injil. Okay, and what is the Torah? The Torah is the revelation from Moses. I'll give you one million bucks to show me a verse in the Quran where it says the Torah was given to Moses. Look it up and find it. Show me where it says the Torah is given to Moses. If you want to give up, because you're not going to find it. There's nothing one, in the Quran that says the Torah is given to Moses. One more second, please. Yeah. There's nothing in the Quran that says the Torah is given to Moses. It says, a book was given to Moses, but it doesn't tell you what that book is. It says the Torah was given, but it doesn't tell you who. Say the second Holy part again. Okay, let's try this again. The Torah Holy was Holy given, Jackson. but it doesn't say who. Nowhere in the Quran does it say the Torah was given to Moses. It says the Torah was given, but it doesn't tell you to Moses. It says a book was given to Moses, but it never tells you that book is the Torah. Hmm. Okay, so now let me repeat the question. Historically, if you were to look at archaeology and history and textual manuscript evidence, what books did the Jews and Christians would have had at the time in Arabia and throughout the world that Muhammad says, my Quran confirms to be true? There are no other scriptures except what we have today. But even if we go through what you're saying, what was the Injil at Muhammad's time? You said Injil, right? What was the Injil that the Christians were reading at Muhammad's time? Because you said Injil. Yeah. So what was it? Because it was there and they had it and they're reading it. Muhammad confirmed it to be true. So what Injil did they have? Uh, and it doesn't specify whether it's the canonical gospel or if it's just... What like... other books would they have had? You're not answering the question. When it says confirming what is with you, that's an historical question. So we want to look at history and see what the Christians had at that time. Now I want you to prove that they had something other than the canonical Gospels. That wasn't Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Prove it. Um, Gospel of Thomas. Everyone, folks, he just confirmed the Gospel of Thomas, which presents a divine Christ who's not truly human, written by Gnostics that don't represent the belief of Jews in the first century. So you're saying that's the Gospel, huh? Because I'm going to read some snippets from it. No, you just, you just asked for examples of what they There was no Gospel of Thomas of the... at the time of Muhammad. There was no Gospel of Thomas at time Muhammad in the 7th century. Third was century. the Gospel of Thomas in the hands of the Christians in Arabia at the time Muhammad? Are you listening? Uh, I don't know if that's true. No, it disappeared. The only reason why you know of a Gospel of Thomas is because a Coptic version, centuries after Christ, was discovered in 1945 in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. But at the time Muhammad, there was no Gospel of Thomas. So let's try again. Let me repeat again. What books did the Christians have at the time of? Because I'm going to quote your Muslim sources to show you, but I'm giving you the benefit of doubt. The Christians. What books did the Christians have? Do you really need to guess?
for you because I'm going to show you from your own sources what it was. Just come clean and, and say it, buddy. Say it. It's the it's the New Testament scriptures. That's what they had. New Testament scriptures. Yeah, so, yeah. so you're you you just then, laughed when you said these scriptures that I have have been corrupted, but your prophets they're not corrupt. So they're you say you say that Moses was never given the Torah, but also no, you it didn't hear me say that they ever gave him you, you the New Testament. You didn't hear me. Let's so try to say you're being, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Jalil, you didn't hear me. I said, nowhere in your Quran does it say the Torah is given to Moses. Repeat me. And, and nowhere does the Quran say it gave the New Testament to the Christians. So, so. let's try this again. What Injil did the Christian like? What was the Injil that they have at the time of Muhammad? Whatever gospel meant. No, no, no. That doesn't get. No, 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 no. You're not going to run. What did they have? Because I'm not going to quote your sources to show you. So let's try it again. What was the Injil that the Christians had that Muhammad confirmed? I'm not a historian. I don't know. Oh, how convenient. Ooh. So now what I want you to do, I want you to go check Google, the greatest scholar that never lived, and say the scriptures of the Christians in the 7th century, what were they? Now Sorry, you want me to give you your Muslim sources to, to prove it? Now, let me um, quote you your Muslim If you had oh, tafsir, I mean, that'd be great. I'd, I'd prefer that. You want me to give you the tafsir to which one? Chapter 12, verse 111? Whichever whichever one specifies what the books are supposed to be. Yeah. In your commentaries, they don't come out and mention the books. I'm giving you a Muslim catalog by a Muslim that mentions the books. It's called Fihrist. That's what I was going to. And then Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah calls the gospel of John as the gospel that God gave Jesus for his followers. Just the so gospel of John? Yes. Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah, Sirat Rasulullah, you can read it in English because I know you don't read Arabic, translated by Alfred Guillaume, and I have the citation, pages 103-104, in trying to find the prophecy of Muhammad in the gospel, he mentions that the gospel that prophesied Muhammad, which God gave Jesus for his followers, is what John wrote down in the Gospel of John, calling John's Gospel the Gospel that God gave to Jesus for his followers. Let me give you the quote. Oh. So, so do you agree make, that the Gospel of John is the Gospel? I just want to make sure I, I understand what you're saying. So no, you, you are saying that... No, Ibn Ishaq is saying, not me. Well, okay, so your position is that... No, not my position. Ibn Ishaq. So yeah, I'm going to correct you a third time. Okay, so what do you believe? What do you consider what I believe? I'm asking you to explain to me what the Quran is talking about. What is the gospel that the Quran is referring to at the time of Muhammad? What are you worried about my belief? Well, this guy this guy is saying it's the gospel of John, right? Is that this guy? Saying? You don't know who Ibn Ishaq is? Are you serious? I, I haven't heard the name. I haven't heard the name before. If you don't know Ibn Ishaq, you don't know anything because Ibn Ishaq wrote the first biography on the life of Muhammad in the year 750 AD. Sirat Rasulullah. Cool. Cool, huh? That's all you got to is say is cool. Uh... That's all you got to say is cool, huh? Are you, by the way, are you a Quran only Muslim? Because now you're going off topic because I know you're doing no. that. Then. What are you? No, I'm just a Muslim. So you're a Quran only Muslim? No, I'm just a Muslim. The Shia are Muslim, and they believe that Abu Bakr, Omar, and I... Oh, okay. Can, can we just stick on Okay, so this? what kind of Muslim are you? Do you follow just the Quran, or you follow the Quran and the Sunnah? I listen to what the Quran tells me to do, and the Quran says to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay, so Sunni Muslim. Now, since you follow the Sunnah, I want to give you Sunan Abu Dawud, because that's accessible. This one, Ibn Ishaq, you have to have the hard copy, and I have it quoted. But I want to give you something accessible. Hold on, so that you can read it with your own eyes. Okay, hold on, hold on, buddy. Hold on, hold on, let me show you something. You can open it up and read it with your own eyes. Here it is. Sunan Abu Dawud on sunnah.com, so you don't need me to quote something that you cannot access because you got to buy the hard copy. So here's the link. This is actually quoted by Tafsir ibn Kathir in chapter 5, verse 41. Click on that link, Sunan Abu Dawud, Hassan, 
by Al Albani, meaning good. Book 39, Hadith 4434. Can you read it for me? Uh, narrated uh, Abdullah louder. ibn Umar. Don't say it under your breath loud so we can hear you. No, I just, I don't speak very loudly. Uh, it's okay. A group of Jews came and invited the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to... Now, by the way, I want, before you go on, when you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have a question about that, but go ahead. Wait, are you going to say it? Go ahead, read. Yes, you said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just go ahead, go ahead, keep reading. Okay. Um, to Kuf. So he visited them in their school. They said, Abdul Qasim, one of our men has committed fornication with a woman. So pronounce judgment upon them. They placed a cushion for the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who sat on it and said, bring the Torah. Then it was brought. He then withdrew the cushion from beneath him and placed the Torah on it, saying, I believed in thee and in him who revealed thee. He then said, Bring me one who is learned among you. Then a young man was brought. The transmitter then mentioned the rest of the tradition of stoning similar to the one translated by Malik from Nafi number 4431. Okay, so th they had a copy of the Torah, not the original Torah. And he says, I believe in thee and the one who revealed thee. Confirming what you read from the Quran that Muhammad confirms what they have at that time. So the scriptures they had, those were the scriptures Muhammad said are the uncorrupt words of God. And I bear witness to them and I believe in them. Historically, we have copies of what the Jews were reading before the time of Christ, after the time of Christ, before the time of Muhammad, after the time of Muhammad. And the only books they had were the Old Testament books. Nothing different. Historically, the only Injil the Christians had at the time of Muhammad would have been the canonical Gospels. In fact, the entire New Testament, because for them, the entire New Testament was revealed by Christ, whether on earth or from heaven. So historically, the books they would have had are what I read today. And you laughed at me when I well, said... Didn't you say it was only the Gospel of John? Okay, let's go to the Gospel of John. You okay with that? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, I, you I sure? I want to hear it again. Let's just go to the Gospel of John. You agree with this Gospel of John, right? I'll entertain that. Yeah, sure. No, no, no. You can't entertain it because he confirmed something, man. Well, Your you didn't Quran? show me that yet. so. Oh, I, I have it here. But you're going to trust me when I quote it to you? Well, I, I just was waiting for you to show me. That's all. Okay, here it goes. Here it goes. I'll quote it for you. But don't tell me I don't accept it. This comes from here. Let me give you the source. You can now go on Amazon.com. Here's the reference in the page number, and I'm going to quote it. Look at the private chat. That's the name of the book. You can go on Amazon right now and get it as a hard copy. The Life of Muhammad, a translation of Ibn Ishaq's Sirat Rasulullah with introduction and notes by Alfred Guillaume, Oxford University Press, pages 103, 104, because I'm going to quote it now. But don't tell me you don't believe it now. This is the English translation of Sirat Rasulullah. Okay? So now let me read it for you, buddy. And I want to put snippets. Among the things which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary, stated in the gospel, which he received from God for the followers of the gospel. So what God gave Jesus to give to the Ahl al-Injil, the followers of the gospel, in applying a term to describe the apostle of God, meaning Muhammad, because Quran says there's supposedly prophecies of Muhammad in the scriptures with the Jews and Christians. Okay? <clears throat> is the following. It is extracted... From what John the Apostle wrote, set down, I'm sorry, for them when he wrote the gospel for them from the testament of Jesus, son of Mary. Then I'm going to read the rest of it. And he now quotes John chapter 15, verses 23 to chapter 16, verse 1. So let me read it. He um, that hated can me. I, can I stop you for just one sec? Um, so I'm not always familiar when you refer to a John. Is, that, is this John the Baptist or is this John? No, John the Baptist died before Jesus. Okay. You just read it. it. says, John the Apostle. Are you not reading it on the screen? This well, is yeah, one I just, of the disciples of I'm Jesus. I'm not always like, following which John. That's all. It just said it. From what John the Apostle said down, according to your Quran, this is this would be a Hawadi, one of the Hawadiyun disciples of Jesus. Okay. Are we getting it now? Yep. Okay, now it's quoting 
the Gospel of John, written by the Apostle John, Hawadi, a follower of Jesus. And here, Ibn Ishaq cites John 15, 23 to 16, verse 1. Okay, so it says, He that hateth me hateth the Lord. And if I had not done in their presence works which none other before me did, they had not sinned. But from now they are puffed up with pride and think that they will overcome me and also the Lord. Right? But the word that is in the law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause, I without reason. But when the comforter, so now here Ibn Iskak thinks the comforter is Muhammad. And this is in the Gospel of John, which we still read today. When the comforter has come, whom God will send to you from the Lord's presence, and the spirit of truth, which will have gone forth from the Lord's presence. This is John 15, 26, by the way. He shall bear witness of me, and you also, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have spoken unto you about this, that ye should not, let me get you the rest of it. Oop, hold on, I so it didn't come in, hold on. Be in doubt. You should not be in doubt. Okay, now, let me read the last, last paragraph. Because then Ibn Ishaq says, this is a prophecy of Muhammad. One second, let me get you the last paragraph. Because I didn't put that all the way in. Here it is, for you and for them. The Mu Na Hemena, God bless and preserve him. In Syriac is Muhammad. In Greek, he is the Paraclete. So here you go. Let me get it for you. This is the last paragraph. So Ibn Ishaq says, This comforter is Muhammad. Okay, that's fine. I'm, we'll talk about that. But here it is for everyone else. I'm going to send it to you in private. So we can now agree that the gospel that the Quran confirms is the gospel of John. Mm. Uh, Are you really ah, ooh, ah? Do I need to go over the verses again? No, I Chrome? just I just found what you were um, referring to, so I'm just reading it. Um, okay. So let me know when we can get to the point. The Quran confirms the gospel that they have. Since you want to say it's the gospel of John, so be it. Let me know when we can agree, so we can move on. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure, we agree, right? The gospel, the Injil is referring to the gospel of John. So the gospel that the Christians would have had, that the Quran says is true and that Muhammad bore witness, that supposedly even prophesied is coming, is the gospel of John, right? Mm. Do we need to go through this again? Uh, I may have missed a part where... Which part of John the Apostle wrote down the gospel for them from the testament of Jesus wasn't clear? Do I need to put that on the screen again? No, yeah, I let me see it. The screen again. Brother, I'm a Muslim trying to read everything you're sending me. Please okay, just so, have well, patience. you're not my brother in faith. Hopefully you'll be my brother in faith. Let's say, I'm your brother in humanity. Faith. So, at least Do you see it sympathy. on the screen? Oh Do you see it on the screen? Do you see it on the screen? Let's see if it you're being distracted. So, this, the Ibn... See, here we go again. Do you see where it says John the Apostle set down for them when he wrote the gospel for them? Do you see that? Yes or no? Okay. Let's try this a fourth time. Do you see Ibn Ishaq, the oldest biography on Muhammad, is acknowledging that the gospel that contains the prophecy of Muhammad, according to chapter 7, verse 157 of the Quran, the gospel that prophesied the letter prophet that's with them is the gospel of John for the sixth time. Yes or no? I'm reading the book that you sent me. Okay, read it for me. Among read things it. which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary, stated. In and the how gospel. did you get the book, by the way? Where did you get the book from? Uh, Archive.org, I believe. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Read it now. That's good. At least now you verified it. It's there. Um, in applying a term to describe, wait, this place. among the things which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary stated in the gospel, which he received from God. So Jesus refer receiving the gospel in applying a term to describe the apostle of God is the following. Do you agree with what you just read that John wrote down the gospel? It says here it is extracted from what John the Apostle sent down for them. 
when he wrote the gospel for them. What did John write? The gospel. Do you agree John's gospel is the gospel? Okay. Do you agree? Yeah, sure. Okay. So why did you take 30 minutes just to say, yeah, it's in front of my eyes. Quotation. I've only just been made aware of this information. Oh, so. okay. So now that we finally, after 30 minutes, got to the fact that you agree, John wrote the gospel. So now, just to make sure you don't tap dance. Do you agree the Quran is confirming the gospel that the Christians had? And here your source says that gospel is the gospel of John? Sure. Sure. Well, thank you for this because that's the gospel where Jesus is said to be the eternal word with God who created all things, became flesh, the son of God who died on the cross and rose again.